I, they're they're in the big arena. I don't like seeing the sky. I like the smaller room. I know now because they're and not only because it's a bigger place, but it's outdoors. They obviously had. I won't say they weren't fans, but there were other people. There were crew members. There were women, women screaming. There were other people that you really didn't see sitting up in a section of the stands to make more noise. Am I correct on this? Besides the folks at ringside this week. Yeah, I figured they must have been crew members and, you know, friends and family of the rest. Yeah. Of yeah. Um, which, so if they've got an outdoor place and a bigger place like that, they did have more noise. My God, why can't the fucking richest wrestling company in the history of the known planet pick up on this and have some people making noise somehow they're breaking every other regulation, but that helps. I just, I still like the small room, but I can understand if they traded that. I like having the underneath and prelim guys and the trainees and wrestling school students around ringside. Uh, if they're letting crew members and people like that up top, I don't know why they wouldn't put some of those people down there. I don't like having top guys. We've passed the point where now I think like to have an MJF level guy or anybody they consider they're going to be using any money matches on pay-per-view or whatever to have them around. I think we've passed that point. We, we've crossed that bridge because it, it just, it doesn't look good to have top guys out there being normal, just being one of the, one of a group. Here comes Lance Archer and he's already beating up a stooge from backstage. Explain to me why the, they would do this brian somehow well it's kind of been part of his regular routine since he got there he would walk around the ring and hit a cameraman or a wrestling student sitting at ringside i guess he's just so fired up being the chicken hawk monster that he just wants to come <laughs> the out there chick, wait a and, minute that you mean the murder hawk what did monster. i say you said the chicken hawk monster no, no, no. <laughs> the murder hawk monster that he just he murders everyone in in his way Okay, here's the problem. I can see if a guy is all jacked up, I can see Vader doing something like this or Stan Hansen. The guy comes out, he's walking around ringside, the cameraman doesn't get out of the way quick enough and he gives him the shove and you see the camera go ass over tea kettle, right? That's fine. They had fucking Archer come out and I think he did that once and the next week he hauled off and slugged somebody. Okay, uh, once again, we're making it ha-ha where we don't need to make it ha-ha because the further before the guy even gets in the ring and does anything, the more he does that make people go, well, that can't be right. I, I can even believe in the context of the logic of the wrestling universe that he can, and on a closed set, punch one of the preliminary wrestlers in the face, even though he's on the other side of the railing. I can buy that. But when it's something that happens every week, then it's obviously something that's staged and contrived. Even when they try to change it up, he's still beating up a civilian. Now he's taken one of the crew members and started beating him up in the back and thrown him out the entranceway. And there's no repercussions of this. And nobody ever, and they don't mention it again after they mentioned it the first time. And nobody files a lawsuit or whatever. You can do angles like that where a guy legitimately loses his shit and strikes one of the fucking crew members and make a big goddamn deal out of it. And maybe the guy's suing, whatever the fuck. It's just, it's too ha-ha. They don't need to do that. It doesn't, it doesn't get him over. It just makes it a set-up, staged fucking thing that now is going to happen every week in some fashion. That's the way I look at it. Anyway, I can't disagree with you. So then Jake did his promo, uh, the sexist promo. I'll apologize to you, Brandy, when you kiss my ass and get in the kitchen, rattle the pots, pans around straight out of the fucking any heel playbook. They're interrupted by Cody's truck out in the parking lot. He comes out, comes down the fucking deal, gets in a brawl with Archer. It, it, it. <laughs> besides the fact that something didn't compute about every time Cody punched Lance Archer in the head and Lance doesn't snap his head and sell it well, he just kind of turtles up. <clears throat> and there were a lot of them, so you could see through them. Point is, it was a brawl with Archer. It was exciting. They kept it moving. Um, it was still, it was even Steven. It wasn't like Cody was kicking the shit out of Archer. He was standing up to him. You know, you can, put, you can see Dusty in that position with a, you know, fucking Tully Blanchard. He stood up to the heel. The heel didn't back up from him. They both fought. 
It's better than most things on AEW television. And then Jake, the manager, pulls Archer out. I thought that took a little too long. Cody should have been rushing him. Maybe people should have been holding Cody back. Uh, but they're juicing up their pay-per-view things, so that wasn't the worst way to open up the show. I don't know. What would you think? I really liked it up until Cody showed up. <laughs> no, listen, hear me out. First of all, I thought Jake, it was a good promo. Unfortunately, I thought this kind of was in line with some of the previous Jake promos where... All the heat's on him. All heat's on him. Archer's just stomping around behind him. Has nothing to do with the big murder hawk. It's all about Jake. So then Cody shows up. The camera just happens to catch him. Then there's another camera in the truck. And then there's another camera to the side of the truck. He's revving up the engine to drive <laughs> five feet into a barricade that he barely touches. Yeah, because he didn't want to mess up the bumper. He drove five feet after revving up the engine like Mr. Tough Guy. By the way, the truck has the ridiculous tattoo on his neck on the truck. <laughs> what a mark for himself. But anyway, he charges after Archer. I'm like, oh, shit, now <laughs> things are really going to happen. Archer's going after him. And they start brawling, and I just didn't think, maybe it was because the brawl went too long. There were a couple points in there where, kind of like Cody's matches, I felt like he did shit he didn't need to do in this spot. You don't need to do that thing where you jump on the rope and, you know, jump backwards into the guy. You're in a brawl. Brawl. Don't do moves. And then I think the one thing we were missing from last week and this week is a fired up Cody promo. In Cody's best moments, he's a great promo. Why haven't we heard this guy go off about what was done to his wife? If that had been Atlanta TV 30 years ago, after the break, you would have come back. Dusty would have been at the podium. Right. And that's, by the way, that's the way it should be done. They would have yeah. come back from the break and Cody would have been there standing next to Jim Ross and Mask Man and Tony Schiavone, and he would have just been going off. And now you're like, oh my God, Cody, we've never seen Cody like this. What will this mean for the match? Instead, we saw that he revs up his car, he drives a couple feet into a barricade, and then, <laughs> and, the, and by the way, and again, Jake got all the heat on himself. So unless Jake's going to work a match, and I don't think Jake's going to work a match, I don't know what exactly they're doing with that, but... That's my two cents about it. I like the promo that Jake did as a promo, although I don't know if it got Lance Archer over at all. And then I just thought the brawl from the moment they showed Cody in his truck, and then there's the side angle from the passenger seat. I mean, it's just, it's so ridiculous. And he's right there. They didn't notice a truck. He, you watch his path. When he gets out of the truck and he goes over the barricade, it's just a straight line to the ring. No one noticed this truck just sitting there with Cody behind the wheel. With the tattoo on it. With the tattoo on it. That way it was completely disguised in that fashion. You know, <laughs> here is one thing. It's like when I used to cut promos for Yokozuna, what they would do is they would focus on him and the mean face and the eyes with the evil intent. You'd hear me talking, but you didn't need to see me most of the time. You'd right. see him. And what about if Jake had come out there? And I liked his material because it's just he's such a fucking prick heel. It was good material. But, it was a good promo yeah, as a but, promo. Yeah. But what if he had come out and said, you know, here's the thing, Cody. I know what you thought you had here. You thought you had your own little paradise, your Garden of Eden, with your own little Eve, where you'd come in and you'd be running things. Because after all, look at your look at your associates. You got the the two midget twins, the little kids that like to play in their backyard. You know you can not only wrestle circles around, around them, but that you can manipulate them, run rings around them. You've got the blood. You've got the genetics. You know how to take care of little goofs like that. And the other guy, the other guy, he couldn't, he couldn't get laid in a whorehouse with a fistful of 50s. You're the superstar around here. He's just getting in his own way. You knew you were smarter than all of them, and you had it as your birthright to be the big star and the big company on TBS networks. But along comes Lance Archer. Along comes a guy who's bigger, a guy who's badder, a guy who's more intimidating, a guy who can take everything away from you physically in the ring, and he's got me alongside of him, Cody, Caesar. He's got me alongside of him because even though your father was a great manipulator and passed it down to you, nobody, Dusty Rhodes or anybody else, has ever come close to the mind manipulation of Jake the Snake Roberts. So together, we're a package that threatens you. But where you're most threatened, Cody, is that uh, Eve to your Adam, that Cleopatra to your Caesar, 
You know that there's occasion that she looks up at you. She sees that blotch on your neck, just like the old man had a blotch <laughs> on his side. And she sees that made for CW network face with those pretty eyes and no evil intent behind them. And she sees that average physique as it bobs up and down. But in her mind's eye, she sees the eyes of the murder hawk. And that's where the camera starts closing in, right? She sees the eyes of the murder hawk. She can feel the sweat dripping off of him and his muscles rippling as he in her mind does for her, Cody, what you can't do in her bed. That's what most intimidates you. And that's what's going to be your downfall because we are in your head and you realize that this man is in the head of the woman that's beside you in bed and you can't stop it. Shit like that, right? It's fucking Jake. He can get away with that shit. That's a great promo. Yeah. But anyway, but in, but instead they're going to have the, him beating up the crew members. 